Now, when near to Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a draw sword in his, in his hand. Joshua went up to him and asked, Are you for us or for our enemies? Neither, he replied. But as a commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked him, What message does my Lord have for his servant? The commander of the Lord's army replied, Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. And now Ephesians 4, 1 through 3. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Amen. The world is facing challenges, isn't it? And we're going through crisis, from crisis to crisis. But like my father said, God plans everything. And always good will come out of everything. Good will come out. And things that are happening today are shaping the year in which we live in. 2023, and this will take us to 2024, because in 2020, 2021, we're going through crisis also, the pandemic. That's why I'm saying I'm very happy you come in your enormous here. Good is always coming out of something, because God plans everything. The last week, you all have been seeing images on your television. It describes the kind of spirit that is hanging upon us. There's no question about that. It is heartbreaking. The destruction of human lives. In fact, it makes it impossible to say that human beings are God's Greatest achievement. When you see the destruction of basic facilities. I've chosen this text today from the book of Joshua. My grandson 
is called Joshua. His father named him Joshua. The Joshua in Hebrew is pronounced Joshua, which means actually means Jesus. So if you are in, in that part of the world and you hear Joshua, Joshua is actually calling Jesus. Yeah. But not this Jesus. We were talking about the Jesus who came to save his people from their sin. That is the Jesus we are focusing. That is the Jesus that God plants our life through him. The story contained in Joshua 15, 13 through 15, is about the story of the falling of Jericho. You see, Jericho is, is a Palestinian city. I don't know how many of you have visited Israel before, but I was there in 2010. And in 2010, I made up a point to visit some biblical places so that, you know, when we were growing up, we thought all these things were in heaven. All these cities were in heaven, but they were actually here. So I made it a point to be there. It's, it's a Palestinian city in the West Bank. It is an administrative seat of the state of Palestine. Jericho is located actually in the Jordan Valley with the Jordan River to the east and then Jerusalem to the west. It's important to know that the demarcation of this place is important to know where, where it is. Joshua's vision has an implication today and a very significant to the churches today. And when I say churches, I'm talking about the body of Christ. The church is made up of people. Actually, most of the time we say we are going to church, but actually you are the church. You are the church that meets at the hospitals, at the factories. So wherever a Christian is, is the church. And wherever a Christian is and wherever the church is, there is Christ. Because his promise is, I am with you. And we take this story to understand, to try to understand a man's vision. God is in the habit of revealing. And you see, we have to understand what brought this vision. Israel was at war. Joshua was the leader. Moses handed him everything to take the lead. And one significance about the leader is a leader is the one who leads his people to God. And every father in this room, you are a leader. You are a spiritual leader. And as a spiritual leader, you have been mandated, commissioned to lead your family to God. And that is what my father was doing. My father is a, a street Roman Catholic. You know, he grew up from the Roman Catholic. He had a Roman Catholic background. And this is coupled with his police training. He, he, he was a policeman. And a very strict father. But he had a very kind of a, a heart that is always trying to manage, trying to care. So most of the time on Sunday, he's on the street bringing law and order. And it was the duty of my mother to bring us to church. You know how many children we were? Eight. No, that's normal. You're eight. But he makes sure that my mother takes us to church. I stand here today because my parents led 
My father led his children to God. It is by God's grace. In fact, you miss a fine opportunity to say amen. It is by God's grace. It is by God's grace that we, we are here. Not that we are special. It is by his grace. And no one comes to his presence by accident. This text that Joshua is revealing to us is a vision. He is a man whose heart was focused on God. And we will read this morning, when we read from Second Chronicles, you see, Second Chronicles has something very nice written there. Second Chronicles depicts a man's place every day. And he says, the eyes of the Lord ran to and fro throughout the whole earth to give strength and support to those whose hearts blameless towards him. This is what God saw in Joshua. He saw a leader who is focusing on him at troubled times. Troubled times. We live in a world that is troubled. There's no question about that. And this is where we are. We will always be here until Christ comes. And this is what God saw in Joshua's heart. Anytime we read, we read history books, for instance. Throughout the history of the world, there have always been signs of conflict and collisions. And the books that contain the records of the past, we see that such records are largely records of wars and battles. When you turn the pages of those books, They are filled with tears of blood. It has been so many, many years. And when people turn to scripture at troubled times, and I think That's the best thing to do. We must always tend to scriptures during seasons of uncertainties, seasons of fear, doubt, turmoil. You see, when we do that, the Spirit uses the God's word. And Paul will say, to teach us to reprove us, to correct us, and to train us as followers of Christ so that we are equipped to do good. I'm just quoting Paul's word to Timothy. That when we turn to scriptures, scripture teaches us Scripture correct us, rebook us, and train us. It train us to be strong, to stand firm. That God support those who really, who really rely on him, as Joshua did. Victory comes when we stop looking to other things for solution and rather start looking to God. For the eyes of the Lord is looking through the whole world and is looking for a heart, a mind that is focused. God support us. And it will never be the other way around. We don't support God. 
or help God in any way or give him anything as though he had any need. God is self-sufficient and that makes him the holy, true living God. And what David described him that there is none like him. That background is important to our text today. So anytime we act contrary to this, to act as if we give God something, is actually an attempt to play that we are God. God is the supreme commander who will give Jericho to Joshua. I title this message, not as a foot soldier, but as the supreme commander, because that is the revelation. I want us to look at the text again. You see, now when Joshua was near Jericho, in fact, he didn't know whether he, he was lost, but when he was near Jericho, he looked up. This is a heart that is looking for God. This is a leader that is not focusing on anything, no matter what situation he finds himself in. This is a leader who is turning his whole being to God, his whole life, his whole heart, his mind towards God. And then he looks up and he saw someone standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Then Joshua went up to him, the soldier. He went up to him. Are you for us or you are our enemy? Neither, he replied. But as commander of the army of the Lord, and I have now come I have now come. He comes not as a foot soldier. He comes as a commander to help in the battles that we are fighting in our life. The issues that confront us. He comes as a supreme commander. Then Joshua asked, what message does my Lord have for his servant? The commander has always a message. The commander of the Lord replied, the message I have for you right now at this very moment is to remove your sandals. For where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did that. Joshua submitted. Joshua surrounded. For the supreme commander to have his way, he demand submission and surrender. Now, when we go further to chapter, chapter 6, it says, Now Jericho was tightly shut up because of the Israelites. It's a very nice story at times like this. No one went out. And no one came in. Sometimes our lives are like that. It is tied up. Nothing comes in. It's filled with doubt. It's filled with fear. But the submission of Joshua 
triggered something, opened something. Look what it happened, it did. Then the Lord said to Joshua, you see, I have delivered Jericho into your hands. Amen. He had delivered Jericho. His surrender, his submission to God, released God's favor, God's grace to deliver Jericho to him. The battle is actually belongs to the supreme commander. The battle is his. We, the Jericho is our world today. Jericho represents us, and we can also do something, and God will also give us. God has given us so much, isn't it? God has given us so much, like he gave to Joshua. He said, lose thy shoes. Leave the worldly behind you. In other words, where you are is holy ground. Sometimes the only way we get nearer to God is to leave the world behind. Leave all the complexities and the chaos. Leave the busy life behind and submit. This what triggered. And he said, you see, I have given you Jericho. Yes, get up all the carnal indulgences and give up yourself wholly to me. And Joshua did that. And the Lord said unto Joshua, you see, I have given unto your hand Jericho. He has given, but we also, we have been given a lot already, isn't it? Yes, a similar promise is given to us also. We have been given eternal life. The God is our God of our salvation. He has given us all these things. And look, in John 16, 33, Jesus said, I have, Jesus said that these things to you, that in me you may have peace. We have been given peace in him. In this world, you will have tribulation. But take heart, for I have overcome the world. So whatever we are going through, God in the end has overcome the world. And there is another one that God has given to us. In Romans chapter 8, verse 31, which I know many of you know that. In fact, if you know, you can say it. In Romans chapter 8, 31, what is God saying to his people? If God be with you, come on, help me here, help me. If God be with you, who will be against you? Because he is the supreme commander. He is not a foot soldier in your life. And we just sang a song. I love that song. The song that we sang this morning tells a lot today. It says, from the ashes, we will rise. From the ashes, we will rise. You will rise. Because if God be with you, who will be against you? But there is something that is to be done. He's looking for a heart that is linked to him. The Lord, our Lord, our maker. If God be with you, who will be against you? Then he went on in 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. He said, little children, you are from God, and you have overcome. For he who is in you is greater than the one in the world. 
He who that is in you is greater. These are promises. There are more than 6,000 promises in the Bible. We need to look at them and own them in our own particular situation. This may be for you. That there is something you have is greater than what is outside. What is it? What is it that you have is greater? What is it? It's not just reading. And this brings me to Ephesians chapter 4. Okay? This brings me to Ephesians chapter 4. You see, Joshua, Jericho had been given to Joshua through submission. Anywhere, everywhere you are, here you are in the presence of the Holy God. And he gives us something in life always. That is why he says, the one in you is greater than the one outside. But what is in you that is so great? What is it? Well, this brings me to my final book I it, it tried to connect this. That is fine in Ephesians chapter 4. You see, in Ephesians chapter 4, Paul is dealing with issues in Ephesus. He's talking to the Christians and the churches. Their lifestyle, public life. Our identity in the world is important no matter what. Because we are God's children. A price has been paid for each one of us. God expects to live a life completely different. A life that reflects his character, his nature. It is very difficult in a world like this. But it is possible because of what is inside you. Because of the power of the Holy Spirit. Because of the power of the Holy Spirit. Paul addresses this and in this book Paul teaches the fundamental of living the Christian life he stretches that you are to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called the word to walk has to do with what it has to do with behavior, our public life, the way we do our work, our business, our family life. It's important. It refers to daily conduct, not just here, because here everybody is nice to everybody. It refers to conduct. To how Christians live day by day. The word that you chose worthy means balancing a scale. Like we have a scale here. And here is the word of God. And here is me. Here is Richmond. My life has to be built up step by step to balance the scale. That's the word Paul used. Worthy, worthy of the gospel, worthy of our calling, that our life should be the same like this, not this. Then we are not working as children of God in this life. For if people are looking for how Jesus looks like, he's looking to his people. He's looking to our character. He's looking to the nature of God. He's looking to how God deals with his people in the world. So he uses this to explain to his hearers. The believer who walks in a daily living should correspond to his blessed position as a child of God and follow her of Jesus Christ. His practical living must match his spiritual position. I hope you are with me this morning. So what are the characteristics of the worthy walk? Well, Paul gives us, in this text, he gives us five. He listed five. You've seen it? 
he listed five characteristics that God wants us to show, even in troubled times, even when I'm angry. He gives us five from verses two and three. They are there. He said that Christians are to walk with all humility, one. With all gentleness, two. With patience. Patience is love. Love is patience. It's a great virtue to be patient in all things. It's a great virtue. The God we worship is a God of patience. He waited and waited and waited and waited, standing at your door, waiting, waiting, waiting. He never gave up on me. When I was studying theology, I think I was the oldest guy in class. I was the oldest. Could you imagine how many times, number of years he waited? The God of patience. And patience is a characteristic of our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is what Paul is giving to us today. That the Christian, a child of God, must exhibit patience in all circumstances. Gentleness in all circumstances. Humility in all circumstances. And love. And peace. Put, this, put these five virtues together. There is no power greater than that power in you. That is it. What is in you? What is it? What is it in you? It's humility. Gentleness. You see, Joshua waited in prayer because he knows that God has not led them. You know, sometimes when we are getting through some difficulties, which we think God has forgotten you. No. You are always here in his mind. Amen. Just this morning, trying to see this vision. It's your vision. That God is the commander in your life. The battles we fight, the relationship, broken relationship, the pain. He is the commander. <clears throat> but what is in you is greater. What is it? What it is that is so special about you? It's what Paul said here. Your humility is not your wealth your possessions, that will go away one day. But this virtue describes our Lord Jesus Christ. Humility, gentleness, it's all part of the fruit of the Spirit. Patience, patience, bearing with one another in love. Love binds everything. God is love. Love is God. It binds everything. This describes who we are in the world. It's love. The enemy you hate, God loves that enemy. And he's working his purposes out to cleanse him through the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. What a great father we have. What a great father you have. We will one day rise up from the ashes. That makes you greater than what is outside. Because what you have here, they don't have peace in their life. They don't have patience. They don't have humility. They don't have gentleness. 
that a child of God has these virtues, these characteristics that describe who God is in you. Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, let, make some noises this morning. Make some noises this morning. Hallelujah. Make some noises. You are greater. These things make you special. To understand the five characteristics, my time is up, but I'm almost there. To understand the five characteristics of the worthy work, living these qualities day by day is not going to be easy. You don't, you don't just wake up one day and you are gentle, you are peaceful. No. These virtues, these characteristics has to be cultivated. You need to practice it. And as you practice it, the Holy Spirit that has been given to you as a deposit propelling you comes in. It's like the cloud of witness. They are saying, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Do it. Be patient. Be gentle. Be generous. Pursue peace. 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 Yes, 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 you, you can. You can be different in anything. Where you work, your home, your family life, bringing up children, you need patience. Because some children are very difficult. You may have three, four, five. They are different. Have you noticed that? Imagine eight children in front of a father and a mother with a level of disobedience. It's not easy. The father, the mother need patience. Amen. You are a mother here. You are a father here. You need patience. Your grandparents, you need patience. That makes you special. Oh, Lord. Now. The, the, the story here of Joshua, it's all about submission. It's about submission. Submission brings the spirit. It brings God. It should be ours today. God does not intend to be merely a foot soldier in our personal battles. And we all have personal battles. We are fighting daily in this depraved world. It's not going to be easy. Jesus Christ never promised an easy life here. In fact, he says the world is evil. Don't love it. That we are so busy dancing with the world. We dance its music. Today, I have grandchildren. And many times, you know, you know that 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 iPhone, the, the tablets and all these smartphones, I don't really know how to use it properly. Anytime I have to wait till they finish their they are, they are paying, then they give me the old one, you know. But you see, this is the age they are in. They are bombarded with social media. How do you get them to focus? It has to be patience and trust in God to enter as the supreme commander to fight the battles. And he will say, you see, I have delivered that to you. That's what he said to Joshua. And he's saying this to every one of you. We are fighting a battle. It is a spiritual battle. 
but he knows the end from the beginning. So he comes as a supreme commander to direct issues in the life of his children. He does not make resources to us so that we may accomplish our own agenda. No, that is not the position of a supreme commander. We, he comes to us as Lord, the sovereign one, the supreme commander. He comes to us as the savior. Yes. So as we prepare to allow Jesus to give the orders in our life, we will allow him to decide, would you do that? That's the question. As you prepare to follow Jesus, as you prepare, would you follow him with patience? Would you follow him with kindness? Would you follow him with humility and peace? Are you? Would you allow him to decide your most important goal decisions? To obey does not mean giving up all control of personal responsibility, but it does demand a conscious choice to deal with him in terms of who he is. I think I have to repeat this again. You see, to obey him does not mean giving up all control of personal responsibility. We have personal responsibility. You have your own personal issues. That's your personal responsibility. That the choices we all make. And God does not interfere with our choices. But it does demand a conscious choice to deal with him in terms of who he is. And who is he? Who is the supreme commander? He's our creator. He's our Lord and Savior. He's the one who went to the cross. He went to the cross. You see, we are dealing with him in terms of who he, he, he is and what he has accomplished for us. He has accomplished that. So we deal with him in that terms. He created us. So we deal with him in that terms. He's the one who comes in our life to fight the battles for us. So we deal with him in those terms. He's a God of patience. We deal with him in that, in that terms. We deal with him in his own character. And so, all what God is asking us to do is to live lives that are consistent with who he is. What he has done for us and what he has given to us in Christ. And he has given us a lot. So how does my life, how does our life measure to the challenge just that the apostle Paul spoke about it. Humility, love, kindness, generosity, peace. How does it match today? I pray, ladies and gentlemen, that as we face these challenges, the child of God is assured that there is a supreme commander who has come to fight the battles in our life. And he promised that I will not leave you alone because you are my dearly loved children. Amen. I want to offer a short prayer. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for reminding us this morning about 
Joyce and the husband, we pray that the Lord will take control of the accident they had this morning. Uh, this morning, Lord, I bring all the conflict and situations in the world. And we pray and thank you for being the supreme commander who has come to us because you promise never to leave us. We claim this promise in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you.